The Bushnell TrophyCam HD Aggressor has the capabilities of taking 1080p video, 14 megapixel images, and has a fast 0.3 second trigger speed. The Aggressor line has both low glow and no glow options, as well as camo or solid brown color. The one I have is solid brown and low glow. While the retail prices are between $180 and $200, I often see them listed much cheaper in stores. It runs off of 8 AA batteries, and according to the ads, that can give you up to a year of battery life, assuming mild temperatures and low numbers of images taken. My batteries haven't lasted quite that long, but that's to be expected as I run the cam in a colder climate and it takes lots of pictures and video. So it's really tough to say if the battery life is as good or better than claimed, but I certainly haven't had any problems with it. The menu is consolidated to a single screen and has six buttons to navigate. Because of this, it's not quite as intuitive as something like the last camera I reviewed, which used sliders to change the settings. On the plus side though, it is pretty easy to figure out and there are more options this way. So it's something that you'll want to keep in mind if you're buying for someone who isn't very tech savvy. The camera can be set to picture, video, or hybrid mode, which is where you get both video and images. In addition, there's a field scan mode, which basically provides time lapse taking pictures at regular intervals, which can be useful for trying to survey an open field. You can choose three different quality settings for both photos and video. These example images are at the highest 14 megapixel setting, and the video is 1080p. Often I find myself choosing the medium quality for photos, as it increases the number of images that can be held on the card, and it's often good enough to evaluate what's in the image. With this camera, you can actually set the interval between triggers in one second increments, all the way up to one minute, and then in one minute increments, all the way up to 60 minutes. The 1080p video quality isn't quite up to par with what you'd expect from, say, a 1080p camcorder in the same price range, but then, seeing as it is a trail camera, you wouldn't really expect it to be. It's at least on par with many other HD video trail cameras that I've seen. Night image quality and brightness can vary depending on what options you select. There are two settings that affect night image quality and brightness. One is the LED intensity. A high intensity makes for brighter images, but it also increases the chance of spooking game. A high shutter speed freezes motion better, but it also leads to darker images. A low shutter speed lets light into the camera for a longer amount of time, which leads to bright images, but also blurry motion. There's also a medium setting for a compromise between the two. Let's talk about trigger speed for a bit. At 0.3 seconds, it's really, really fast. Almost too fast. And what do I mean by that? Well, the trigger zone is a little bit wider than the camera's field of view. This is so that by the time the camera triggers, the animal has had a chance to make it into the frame. The 0.3 second trigger speed is great for running animals. That being said, I do think it would be helpful to have an option for changing the interval between photos in burst mode after that first image is taken. Video trigger speed is slower than the photo speed. I would put it at around 2 or 3 seconds. For slow movement, it's fine. For a brisk pace, expect it to start recording around halfway or more through the frame. I didn't test the detection range, although Outdoor Life partnered with Trailcam Pro for a recent round of testing and measured the detection range at 110 feet. They also pinned the Bushnell Aggressor as the editor's choice. I can't come up with a whole lot of things that I didn't like about the camera, and as a quick disclaimer, this camera was provided courtesy of Bushnell for testing. I think it would make a great camera for someone who isn't afraid to spend 10 or 15 minutes reading the manual and working through the settings to find out what they like. The battery life is a big plus, as is the trigger speed. I haven't noticed any negative issues such as the camera shutting off or failing to take pictures. And as for image quality, well hopefully this video gives you a good idea of what to expect. Thanks for watching.